Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. One of the key stats to look at when game planning is winning on third down. If you can stop a team on third down, it gives your offense more opportunities to go score. And that's a good inclination that you can win the game. Or held the high power Buffalo Bills to 3 of 13 on Sunday night, which is 23%. This was the Ravens' best defensive output of the short season. Let's take a look at how Kyle Hamilton and the rest of the Baltimore Ravens set the tone Sunday night for what was an impressive third down showing. One guy that we should watch out for on your defense tonight. Whoever's wearing black. All right, welcome back. Now, let's, let's get started looking at these third down situations that the Baltimore Ravens did so well versus the Buffalo Bills. And kind of one of the reasons why we, we shut them down and was able to do what we did offensively and defensively. The, the offense helped the defense out and the defense helped the offense out. And they just worked well together. This is the situation. First quarter, 13 minutes and 57 seconds left. It's third and five at the negative 35, the minus 35 for the Buffalo Bills, which is the positive 35 for us. Two high shell with Roquan standing over the guard. You see Roquan kind of lined up over the guard right there, you know, giving the inclination. He could blitz. He could come, whatever. But Roquan drops out. That's Roquan right there. He's going to drop out. See, Wiggins is man-to-man with, with um, Keon Coleman down there. You got some rookie-on-rookie rookie crime going on at the bottom of your screen. <laughs> and we seem to be in some sort of a zone at the bottom. Because you got Kyle with the cover in the back out the backfield. And so at the bottom of your screen, you got man. You see, you got man at the bottom. Kyle covering the back. Wiggins got Keon Coleman. Roquan has the middle of the field. But at the top, we're in some sort of zone. You see a bracket with, uh, who is that, Stevens and um, Marlow. They got that first wide receiver bracketed right there. But they also have the tight end behind them. But you got Marcus Williams right over top of that. And then you got Eddie kind of positioned in the middle of the field, but looking at that zone side. So you really got four over two on that top side, and you got man at the bottom. So looking at Josh Allen back there, he really has nowhere to go. So he just pulls it down and runs, and Marlowe tackles him just a yard short. Because it's not where he gets hit. It's where he starts to slide. And if we go back, he's trying to get to the 40-yard line. He starts to slide at the 39. So he's a yard short right there. That's why he's a yard short. If you look at it from the end zone view, you'll see the fact that, you know, everybody's covered. See Roe up there over the guard. See Kyle kind of lined up over the back, and he's going to go with the back. Back leaks, Kyle goes. Roe chases number one. Marlowe comes off of secure, and they stop him a yard short. That's the first one. Second one, situation. Still in the first quarter, 11 minutes, 14 seconds left. It's third and two at the 50-yard line. Win a traditional nickel, but Marlo playing it. Marlo's our nickel, nickel uh, corner right here, and I like it when he's in the slot right there. We had a two-high shell over the top with Kyle and Marcus, and a Bizzle in that empty look, which is one of their favorite third-down formations because it gives uh, Josh Allen run lanes if the quick pass is not there. Post-snap is man-free. With Simpson being a whole player. Simpson's a whole player. Marcus is over top. You see them kind of rotating at that right there. Now, what I initially thought was, you look, look at Josh, and let me go back. He initially looks at this, this quick out at the bottom. He looks at it real quick, and I thought that's where he wanted to go. But I think what he was trying to do was just move Trent Simpson so he'd come back to the middle of the field. Because look what happens at the middle. He, he comes off of that too quick. Too quick. He doesn't even give it a chance because really that's his best option. But he really wanted that tight end over the middle. And look at what happens in the middle. You got Trent Simpson in front. You got Marcus Williams over top. Pause. And you got Roquan trailing. So they really bracketed that tight end, which I think is Kincaid or Knox. It's Kincaid or Knox, one of the two. And he really has nowhere to, to go with it. And another thing that's helping, you know, helping muck this up is the pressure from Nomni Matter BK and Travis Jones. Look at the push they get up the middle. And by the time Josh is ready to throw, because he's pump faking this too because he, he can't get it in the traffic. See the pump? Can't pump it because Rose right there. And you see Trent. You see Marcus kind of coming in the picture too. The whole time out of BK and, and Jones is steady pushing the pocket. Pump again. And now you, he got to stand tall to try to throw it. But by this time, out of BK and Travis Jones in his face. 
And I really don't have a good window to throw it out of. That's how the front end and the back end work together. If you guys are old enough to remember when Warren Sapp worked on the NFL Network, he always say the front end and the back end got to work together. And in that case, they did. Play number three I want to show you. Second quarter, 13-43 left, third and one. Ravens are in the nickel again. First two by two, 11 personnel by the Bills. It's man free with, the, with them trying to run an RPO. Now, let's, let's, let's flip to, to this side of it. This is what happens. When, when James Cook flips over, watch Ojabo change his stance, and which is going to really help the play. Ojabo's going to change his stance, and that helps the play. The angle he takes at Josh Allen really confuses Josh because Josh doesn't know if he's coming at Cook or is he's coming at him. And so he makes the wrong read because this is an RPO. He makes the wrong read and keeps this ball. And because, because Ojabu changes his stance, he kind of fools Allen and slow plays it just enough to mess with it. And so he keeps it. And now right automatically, he's on Josh Allen. Josh still is strong enough to get the ball out there. But now let's go to the, the pass part of it. With Josh Allen getting it out there, they try to set a little pick on uh, Kyle Hamilton with the tight end. But Kyle is smart enough to go over top of it. And because of because of Ojabo being on top of Josh Allen right now, the pass is not the greatest. And Kyle comes downhill. Wiggins comes over his man, and they double team the tackle and stop him. Because it was third and one, we get him for no gain. And that's the front end and the back end working together. That's Ojabo on the front end, Kyle and, and Wiggins on the back end working together. Kyle did a good job of not being picked by that little rub route and, and not letting the tight end get that first down. It's a great job of them working together. Play number four, I'm going to show you. Second quarter, 6.55 left, 38. Ravens are in their show personnel. And show personnel is, well, show package, rather, is when the two linebackers are in the A-gap. And it looks like it's going to be a double A-gap blitz. But they can do a number of things. They can drop out. They can go. You just don't know. And it's really up there to confuse the offensive line. But in this case, Kyle and Marcus drop out. Or Darius, who was the free safety, drops down, and Marlowe blisses. Marlowe, who was over the number two, he blisses. That's Marlowe's pass right there. And what that does is that confuses the tight end and the guard. They focus on Marlowe while not focusing on Travis Jones is who you need to focus on. Big Zah, Travis Jones. Travis comes through because Osiris Torrance just really throws a hand at Travis, and that don't, that don't work. That crap don't work. Look at Travis, his arms over real quick because they're really focused on Marlon. And the whole time while Travis is coming through the middle, the guy from off the couch university, which is Calvin Noah, who had a resurgence as like the older he's got, the better he's got. It's winning on the edge. Travis gets the initial hit. Van Noah cleans it up. Another sack. Another sack. And the last one I want to show you, because we, we had, it, it was three for 13, so they didn't have a good percentage. But I'm just going to show you these five and get you up out of here. This one, second and, second quarter still, third and two. A minute and 16 seconds left. They're on a negative 47. Bills on 11 personnel and two by two. The Ravens on that nickel again with Marlon as the um, slot corner. And I, like I said, I love Marlon as his slot corner. Really do. Too high shell, but we're man free again. Rolls the whole player. Marcus is the free. Marcus going to slide over a little bit. Now, I would, a little backtracking. Last week, the Cowboys had a little success running Cavante Turpin on some crossing routes versus Marlon in the slot. So I guess Buffalo say, hey, we can do that same thing with, um, who is this? Who is this receiver? With Khalil Shakur on Marlon, running him across the field. But one thing is, Khalil Shakur is not as fast as Cavante Turpin, Turpin, and Marlon makes an excellent play on this route. He gets, he gets a hand on him. And then as Shakir tries to accelerate, Marlowe accelerates, undercuts it, throws that left hand out there without touching him, knocks the ball away. Hell of a play by Marlon. Marlon played a great game in the slot, and it's going to look even better from the end zone view. Watch as Shakir tries to accelerate across the hash and watch Marlon accelerate even faster and knock this ball away. Now, Turpin's, just, Turpin's a burner, so Turpin was able to run away from Marlon. Shakir came. Great play by Marlowe to, to get his hand in there and knock that ball away. So, you no, know, I appreciate what Zach Orr did. I appreciate the, the players. 
those guys got together. I think their communication was better. They played faster. They played well as a unit, and they did a great job of shutting down this high power Bills, who was averaging over 30 points a game and held them to just, uh, I think, 13. I don't have the score right in front of me, but I think 13. So we did a great job of shutting them guys down, limiting them. They got a garbage touchdown at the end, a garbage time touchdown, and or defense. And it was week four. I thought they started getting together by week seven, week eight. But if it's any inclination of what they can do, you know, coming forward, look out. Look out. The offense starting to get it together. The defense starting to get it together. Hey, we're going to start moving up. We're going to start moving. And we already, we only one game out of first place, people. Only one game. We got to look out for the team in the black and purple. We're going to look out for the team in black and purple. So I appreciate guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Remember the motto, FTMF, film, then more film, because the film don't lie. And we always watching film over here. I appreciate y'all. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll see y'all next time, man. Peace and love.